how do we overcome suffering? Like suffering in the mind, suffering in the heart. Because a lot of people are suffering. So much, yeah. What is your take on that? <laughs> Very existential, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think suffering has gotten a bad reputation. And what I mean by that is, of course, I don't want anyone to suffer. But I think we also need to normalize the fact that we are suffering. And a lot of you know humanity suffers for prolonged periods of time. And so what helped me, I remember going to my therapist and she said something to me that I didn't understand at the time until later I did. And she said, you're going to really struggle with life until you can find beauty in suffering. And I remember being like, screw you. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? What great advice. Thanks so much. And he felt really dismissive. I know he wasn't because mm. she was like the best therapist in the world. Um, but it was kind of like, it really rubbed me the wrong way where I'm like, I don't even know what you're saying. And of course, I don't want people to suffer. And of course, I think you need to look at your life and go, am I contributing to the suffering? Because that's mm. all you can change. If it's something outside yeah. of your control, you can endure and humans have a beautiful capacity to do that and get a support system and just endure it until the storm passes. And that is like the best we can do. And then when we realize that we're the ones inflicting the suffering, and I think there's a lot of situations, myself included, where it was like I was actually inflicting it and yet a victim to myself, that's when you have to go, okay, well, then your approach to suffering isn't just purely compassion, it's compassion and action. It means yeah, be kind and gentle with yourself and also realize that you need to change your actions in order to stop suffering so much. Um, and I think those two things are really important to keep in mind. And then circling back to the beauty part is understanding that like all of it, all the emotions have something beautiful in them. And I think the first time that I like cried and was like, this is beautiful. I like heard my therapist's voice and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and that's not going to happen every time, but it was kind of like, wow, look at me expressing myself and look at, look at how much, how deeply I can truly feel. Cause my tears are really telling me how deeply I feel. And there was something really cool about that moment. I'm not advocating that we should be like, yay, the world is, you know, going in flames and we should find it beautiful. But there are moments where we truly can. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an, a simple like answer. It's not a simple question because you're right. There's so many different cases, right? For suffering that is like from something we can't control, like all you can do is endure. But like, I think when I ask about suffering, I'm talking more about suffering that people impose on themselves. And I kind of want you to go a little bit deeper into that. Like, how can we, you, you talked about like taking action, like compassion and action. So what do you mean by, by action? By action, I mean, is change your behavior. So there are sometimes extreme cases that I see where individuals be so deeply unhappy. And I'm going to use like a random example um, made up. Just let's say that you're married to someone you don't want to be married to or in a relationship that you don't want to be in a relationship with. And they go, well, I can't move to a different city. I can't, you know start a different job or I can't date other people and express myself and we, you know, blah, 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 because I'm in this relationship. And then they feel like their whole entire life is now trapped because of this relationship. And there's no way out because you're not willing to let go of this relationship. And so this would be partly self-inflicted because <laughs> what you have to understand and what I often tell people is like, you actually have a choice. You're not choosing to make a different choice, but you do have a choice. They're like, no, sir, I don't have a choice because if I leave, I'm not going to have financial support. If I leave, my family will be upset if I leave. And it's like, absolutely all those terrible things will happen. I'm not saying it's an easy choice. I'm not even saying you should take the choice, but you need to recognize the choice. And sometimes I think we are not willing to lose out on things like, well, my friend circle will fall apart. So I'm just going to stay in it. With, and the reason for that is that we forget that the cost is still there. Yes, the friend group is safe and that doesn't become the cost. But you know what becomes the cost? Your authenticity, your sense of self, your sense of expression, your fulfillment, your meaning, your respect. And so we often sort of pretend we don't have a choice. And then <laughs> we don't act because we go, well, I can't. And the reality is most of us have more choices than we think we do because 
if we were honest, we would go, I just don't want that to be my choice because I don't want to deal with the consequences. And by the way, again, I'm not talking about financially abusive relationships or any of those extreme contexts where, of course, your choices are much more limited and it is really unsafe and all, all of that stuff. But I'm talking about the fact that like, when it's uncomfortable, we're like, well, that's not an option. It's like, no, that is an option. You could just you know, do those things and you won't like it. But ultimately, if you act and you have that sense of compassion, you can create a very different life for yourself. Yeah. I'll highlight the what you said about there's always a choice, even if it's not like an ideal choice, there will be consequences, but just know that you always do have a choice instead of acting like, oh, I have no choice. I'm stuck in the situation. I, right. It's like you could go back to school at 50. It would suck, but you can. I know you could leave your partner in five years. You'd be really sad, but you can. Like, it's good to remember that, like, you actually can do a lot of, a lot of things. Um, and either that's going to motivate you to try something different, or at least it will make you not feel like a victim to your life, but like you chose it. And sometimes nothing has to change except your mindset. And all of a sudden you have a healthier relationship with your current reality. Mm, yeah, yeah. Cause it takes back your power in recognizing I have a choice and I'm, I'm choosing to stay even if it's hard versus, or it's right. Be- because instead of feeling like, oh, I'm stuck here against my own will versus I have a choice and I'm choosing to, to stay here. <laughs> oh my God. Right? No, it's it, such it is a, a huge, it is a shift. huge, like your day can look exactly the same. And if you make that shift of like, I'm choosing to go to work, I hate my job, but I'm choosing to go to work. Yeah. This is a deliberate choice rather than like, I don't have yeah. a choice. I have to go to work. Yeah. It makes a yeah. huge, huge difference. <laughs> 